This year's AIG Women's Open will head to Muirfield for the first time. It's the third straight year the Women's Open will go to a course that has traditionally hosted the Men's Open, following Troon in 2020 and Carnoustie last year. With courses like St. Andrews and Royal Porthcall on the schedule as well, Muirfield continues a trend of a deliberate advancement in the status and prestige of the event. There's various factors that we need to consider in order to decide which venues we want to host the championship at. Um, for this championship, we've been working with our partners AIG to try and elevate the championship and really create a world-class championship for the world's best players to take part in. So venue selection is a really important part of that and we want to make sure that we're playing on the best courses in the world. Um, you know, we've got a fantastic feel for this championship and these are the best women in the world, so we want to provide the best courses. But Muirfield's re-emergence onto the world stage has not been a smooth one. After Phil Mickelson's open win in 2013, the course's future as a major venue was in limbo. A 2016 vote to admit women members failed to gain the required two-thirds majority, and the RNA pulled the course from its open championship rota. The male-only membership policy, which dated back to its founding in 1744, changed the next year with a successful vote. In 2019, 12 women members were invited to join the club, and in August of 2020, the RNA announced that the Women's Open would come to the historic venue in 2022. The club's made great progress over the past few years, um, so I think they're, they're very excited to host the women, um, and particularly with the field that we have. Um, I think they're really excited to see a women's championship at Muirfield, as are we. Muirfield's club, known as the Honorable Company of Edinburgh Golfers, has a rich history from writing the first edition of the Rules of Golf to helping commission the Claret Jug in 1872. With a design pedigree that includes old Tom Morris, Harry Colt, and Tom Simpson, the course has its own stout history and features possibly the greatest list of past winners of any championship venue. Yeah, well, I mean, I think if you, so that I don't go back forever, but if you start post-war, so you've got Henry Cotton, who won in 1948, you've got Gary Player, who won in 59, you've got Nicholas, who won in 66, you've got Trevino, who won in 72, you've got Watson, who won in the early 80s, you've got Faldo, who won in 87 and 92, you've got Ernie Els, who won in 2002, you've got Mickelson, 2013. As a role of honour, it would be very hard to beat that. And I think what it says is that in that entire period of time post-war, only the very go best golfers have succeeded here. And I think it's a, a function of the fact that, I think it's a, a very straightforward course in one sense, but I think that's deceptive. And I think it's actually a much more challenging and a much more strategic golf course than meets the eye. What about it reveals itself the more and more you go around it? I think it's, it's, um, it's kind of mastering the art of common sense, really. So Nicholas is a perfect case in point. He hardly ever used a driver when he won the Open here. He played a long iron off the tees because his strategy was the bunkering is penal. If you go into a bunker, you probably lose a shot. The rough is, is rough. I mean, it really fulfills the description of the word. So I think, first of all, you've got to not try and dominate the golf course. I think you've got to play the golf course cleverly and strategically. That's one thing. Secondly, is because the course is rooted in a clockwise nine and an anti-clockwise nine, you're very seldom playing in the same direction consecutively. And that then brings in the third element, which is the weather. And so what happens when it's windy is you're facing constant changes of direction which change the ball flight, change the distance, change the course management you need to, to have. Extremely difficult and, and although it's extremely calm today, calm days at Muirfield they're pretty rare. So you, you have to master the golf course, you have to master the elements, you have to be strategic. You know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a ser serious challenge. For a course in a club with so much history, and after the uncertainty of the last decade, there's no better reintroduction of Muirfield to the world stage than as the host of the best women players in the world. What does a venue do for a championship for someone in your position? I think it creates the stage on which we can showcase the players' talents because these are the best women in the world and we want to provide a stage that's going to showcase 
everything that they can achieve in the game. Um, so I think for us the venue is really important in that. Um, but Muirfield is just a fantastic venue. You know, it's a phenomenal venue. So I think it's got to be one of the best Lynx courses in the world. And it is always immaculate. So it, it will be immaculate for this championship as well. So I think that, you know, the, the course is stunning, the, the area is stunning, the views that you see across the course, it's just the whole thing is, is an iconic venue. You know, the view back to the clubhouse, it's just, a, it's just a beautiful venue and I think it'll be a great course to challenge the players.